Hey guys, Josh Turner here, but you guys know me as Death's Crowbar from Christian-Gaming.com, the hardcore Christian gamers. Today, I have a very special video news update for you about an interview between Xbox Corporate VP Phil Harrison and Computer and Video Game.com's Rob Crossley. The interview occurred just a few days ago at Gamescom, and so we will be talking about that and wh what is in the video, what is in the interview, and what some of this may mean. So let's get started. To start off, we're going to talk about one of the first few questions, and that question was: With all these policy changes, Xbox is making. Will the Xbox One be unique enough to stand out against the Xbox 360? And basically, here is what Phil said. This is a direct quote. So we hope we are being seen as a brand that is listening to consumers, and one that gives consumers a choice. Now I want you guys to remember that quote for right now, because I will bring it up later. I'll say it again. So we hope we are being seen as a brand that is listening to consumers and one that gives consumers a choice. He goes on to say, people can buy games physically on disc or digitally through our marketplace. Both can coexist on our platform, which supports both very well. That's still a very important part of our strategy. But ultimately, it's the games that make the Xbox One stand out, and we have the best lineup of games, we think, in the history of consoles. So obviously, Microsoft is very confident in the changes they have already made, the improvements they've made, and they're very confident in their game lineup and that it will outbeat Sony's lineup. That it is the best lineup. That is a, a, a big thing to say. So, uh, after that, Phil was asked why there has been no release date during Gamescom. And basically, he says that November is all he can give right now. November is what you will get from anyone at Microsoft with, if you are asking them the question of a release date. Currently, the marketing guys are still trying to figure up the best day. This begs the fact that Microsoft may be strategically releasing their console to gain a larger part of the gaming community and a larger part of the video games market than Sony. Also, Rob wanted to know if the Xbox One is just an updated 360. Alright? Phil's answer to this is summed up like this. More or less. He basically says that the CPU and the GPU are more powerful than the Xbox 360s. Well, this isn't a big surprise, but he also says that Xbox Live, Connect, Smart Glass, Smart Match, and the Xbox Live Cloud really are what set it apart. I don't know about you guys, or how many of you play the Xbox 360 and know about all its features. But here is where I would like to remind you that Xbox Live, Connect, and Smart Glass have all been already integrated into the Xbox 360. Along with that, Smart Match is just a service to help aid matching players of like play styles together when playing online games. This already happens to a certain degree through the uh, system Xbox 360 already has. I do not know what what it's called, 
but where you can rate another player you have seen on the Xbox 360 based on whether they are too aggressive or they quit early or things of that sort. You can also ban your, someone from playing with you. So I don't see how Smart Match is that much better yet other than the fact that it's going to have a nice little what do they call it? Xbox hell for uh, the people who hack and cheat all the time. So that that's the big thing with that. They also say cloud storage. I mean, the cloud is a big thing that's coming. They've got the power of the cloud. Well, cloud storage is already on the Xbox 360. The Xbox 360 is cloud enabled. So here comes my question. It's cloud enabled. The Xbox 360. How how does that set apart the Xbox 360 from the Xbox One and vice versa if they both are cloud enabled? Yes, they've got this mystical cloud processing thing that's supposedly going on with the Xbox One, but most people don't really understand what that means and to what extent it will work. So we'll have to wait and see for that. All right. Another thing. Another thing. All right. What probably sets the Xbox One apart is the fact that it has all the stuff it has. The stuff which he did not mention. I'm not against the Xbox One. In fact, I'm pre-ordering it. So much the opposite. What I think really sets it apart from the Xbox 360 is the fact that you have Skype and you can Skype someone who's on their computer and talk with them over Xbox Live. And that's great. You can record games straight from your Xbox 360 uh, Xbox One, sorry, straight from your Xbox One. You can stream games straight from your Xbox One without a capture card. And that is great. And you have your TV input, which is a nice thing. Now, do these things make it a system that is that much better? I don't know. But it does differentiate it. So, that's one thing to keep in mind. Now, when asked if Xbox had made any deals for the TV services in the UK, any partnerships, Phil basically said that they will not be discussing media deals right now as it is Gamescom. And th Gamescom is about the games and not the media services. Though in time, they will announce what services they have partnered with, and this will most likely be at a media-related event. Alright? So here's my problem with this. This becomes a concern for me. I live in Texarkana, Arkansas, as some of you may know. Now, here we have only a few real television service providers. You got Dish Network, you got Direct TV, and Cable One. You can also use an antenna to get your local channels. Now, I know the Xbox 360 was promised to have certain video apps where you got to watch some of your TV shows and such through those video apps on your Xbox 360. The problem with this is it was only it only worked with certain providers. It only worked if you had a partnered provider. Alright? If you had something like Dish Network, like I have, where 
they are not partnered with Xbox, you did not get the benefit of that of those apps. All right. So when you think about this, you know, I'm not the only one who has these issues. There's people all across the country who have these issues. Their providers are small providers or bigger providers and just haven't partnershiped with a company like Xbox. So if they don't partnership, make a partnership with Xbox, if they don't partner up, how useful will the TV input, the media input, be? They promised we'd be able to control the Xbox One with our Kinect 2.0, that we'd be able to change channels and do all this fancy stuff, pause, play, or whatever. I, I, I can't remember all the details. You'd be able to switch back and forth between games and TV and such. But my question becomes, if they're not partnered with my television service provider, am I going to get those benefits? All of them at least. Sure, I might be able to switch back between my games and my live TV, but will I be able to change the channel with my Kinect? Will I be able to do something like that, to pull up my guide with the Kinect? Or will it just be more of a pass-through where I'm using my remote and just telling my Xbox, go to TV so I can watch TV? Because other th than that, it's, it just makes it a pass-through, you know? It, it's, it's not that big of a deal. I mean, sure, it frees up one HDMI port on my TV, but that's about it. So you've got to think about that. Will your television service provider be supported? Will it be partnered with Xbox? And if it isn't, what, what will all you be getting? Will you be getting all the features? Or what, will you be getting half the features? Or will you only get one or two of the features? I don't know. But this is something we need to know. Now also, he was asked about the deal that was made with the Xbox One European consoles having FIFA 14, I believe? Yes, FIFA 14, that's the new one, in all of the uh, Xbox One pre-ordered consoles, at least pre-ordered ones for Europe. All of them get one free video game. Because, supposedly because FIFA is big in these countries. Alright? And, yes, I'm glad that they're giving away a free video game. But I'm American. And my question is, do we get a free video game? It would be like if they said, okay, the U.S. is the only ones getting this free video game. I'd be like, well, why isn't Europe? Why isn't Asia? Why isn't Australia? I'm not trying to be this whole gimme, gimme, gimme. I'm saying you're, uh, the X Xbox is fans deserve an equal you know an equal amount I mean why should they not it's the thing of why should they get a free game and not us I mean it are you trying to entice more European customers to buy the console with it or what what's going on here and that's the big question uh, will we get a promotional equivalent I'd be happy with a free year of Xbox Live myself if that was all I got 
In fact, I'd be more than happy with a free year of Xbox Live. It's about the same price as a brand new Xbox One game. Now finally, I'm moving on to the last part of this video, and it's kind of big here. So it was confirmed by Phil that there will not ever be a Xbox One sold without Kinect 2.0 bundled in with it, as far as a new console. All right. He compares it to things like the disc tray and the chipset that are in the Xbox One. All right. So here's my problem. The disc tray and the chipset aren't removable. He also compares it to the controller, but the controller is something you must have to use the console. They've already admitted you do not have to have the Kinect plugged in at all times to use all of its features of the Xbox One. That if you want to play a single player game that does not you does not demand you to use Kinect features to play it, you do not have to have the Kinect plugged in. So my question is, how is this the same? He says the Xbox One is Kinect, and Kinect is Xbox One. But this isn't like the chipset. The chipset's integrated into the whole system. I, if I removed the chipset, it would not cause the system to just keep going. I, it couldn't keep going without it. I couldn't just get some of the features. If I removed the controller, I could not use it whatsoever. All right, I can't play Halo without my controller. If I remove the disc tray, yes, I could get downloadable games, but I can't use my discs whatsoever. The Kinect 2.0, on the other hand, if I remove the Kinect, I can still play things. Many of the games that have been announced, because most of them, from what we've seen at E3 and other conferences, just show that it uses the Kinect, but it's not necessary to use the Kinect. The Kinect adds functionality, but it is not necessary. All right, so also I'm going to say some more stuff. All right, so here's where I'm bringing you back to the quote I said earlier. Phil told us, so we hope we are being seen as a brand that is listening to, com to consumers and one that gives consumers a choice. All right? And Connect is really the problem with this quote. Connect 2.0. Because they're saying they're listening to consumers, but most consumers of the Xbox 360 who would think about getting an Xbox One, I know, do not want the Xbox One to come with Connect 2.0 and know that if it did not come with Connect 2.0, it might sell for a lower price like $350 or even $300, undercutting P the PlayStation 4. Not only do, do they not want it, but they've said, just give us the option of buying one without it. Don't force us to have to buy it separately necessarily, but give us the option to buy one without it. And here's where the second part of the quote, and one that gives consumers a choice, is also failed. <laughs> They're not giving us a choice between having the Kinect or not having the Kinect, having a cheaper version of the console without it, or having the expensive $500 console with Connect. 
All right. So I don't really know where the choice and listening all is because yes, they uh, you know they listened when we said we're not going to buy your console because you have DRM. They listened that we need a headset. But are they giving us a choice? Or are they listening now? Because if they change their minds, are they listening? Are they still listening to us? That's my point. They say they're listening, but are they still listening? All right, in a survey done by Game Informer, a very recent Game Informer issue, in fact, they surveyed over 9,000 people using GameInformer.com. Now, it was found that 58.6% of Xbox 360 owners did not purchase the original Kinect. 58.6%. Alright, moreover, 31% of those that did regret the purchase. 31 regret it. They don't just, you know, uh, I don't really use it, but it's okay. They regret it. This means, all right, over 5,274 of these 9,000 did not even buy the Connect, And those who did, over 1,156 regretted the purchase. When you pair this with the stats that most people do not normally use their Connect. If they do, they use it for voice functionality, which isn't even that good. And those who do use their Connect usually use it for party games like Dance Central or Just Dance and use these on the occasions when friends are over or parties are going on. You find the fact that Connect is highly underused and underwanted. Most gamers I know do not want Connect 2.0. And they think it's a very expensive thing to add on to the console. We know that this costs the same amount to make as the Xbox One. All right, Those who are okay with the Kinect will probably play, on average, I'd say about 10 hours of just regular Kinect games. These are just your average gamers, not the cash core gamers, but more of your hardened gamers who are okay with the net, the connect. They may play 10 to 20 hours at the most, which compared to a game like Skyrim, where people put over 300 hours in, maybe a piece, Someone like me who puts 300 hours in within the first two weeks. It's just mind-blowing amounts of a difference. And when you think about the people who have weight issues, where I know at least the, connect, the original Connect right now reads people who, have, who are larger, who have weight issues, it will read them as furniture. All right. If this continues with the Connect 2.0, heavy and overweight people may not be able to use it whatsoever. And so it's just a big paperweight that you can talk to. So the question becomes, will Microsoft be willing to sacrifice Connect 2.0. Will they change their mind again? Listen to their consumers. 
and remove what could be added functionality to games but have a lower price copy of the console that more people would buy or will they stick with Connect 2.0 being in every bundle, every console, every brand new console, in every box of everyone, and risk losing customers? I know many casual gamers and hardcore alike that are thinking of not getting the Xbox one and switching over to Sony and the PS4 due to the fact of the Connect 2.0 being in the box. It begs to differ is Xbox truly listening to us or are they trying to just shove this quote unquote extra functionality down our throats. But that's not all I have to say about Connect 2.0. In a way, there's a sort of justified reason for this, you know. It does ensure that a Connect 2.0 will be with every console, and developers can add that functionality that they want to add that they normally could not because they would not know whether a player would have it. It also allows more developers to develop better games for the Kinect 2.0, knowing that everyone will have one, and knowing that at least some of the people who have them, because everyone will have them, will be interested in buying Kinect-only games. How this works out, I don't know. Uh, I don't know how Connect 2.0 is. I don't know how many games sell for the original Connect. How much Connect games sell. I can tell you a lot of Just Dance and Dance Central sells. But I don't know how much in total. I hope that somehow this does bring people to uh, developing more games and a whole lot better quality games for the Kinect 2.0 if Xbox sticks with keeping it in their console. Because if it doesn't, like I said, it's a big paperweight you can talk to. It, in uh, com previous commercials for the original Kinect, we were shown many functionality details that we would have supposedly in our connect that this connect would have and many of those did not come to fruition or just were not high quality enough that anyone really liked them that much the connect version 1 is very unresponsive and has a large amount of lag time. I know certain things have been improved with Connect 2.0, but the past repeats itself, history repeats itself, and we have to ask, will we get what we are being promised? Will Xbox risk losing a fanboy or two by selling a, a Xbox One without Connect? Or will they keep the Connect 2.0 bundle and risk losing tons of casual customers? This is a big question to ask. All right. I want you guys to think on this and uh, to think about what console you're purchasing if you are purchasing one this 
console. You know, if you're purchasing one this cycle, I believe most of you who are reading or listening to the stuff about this are concerned about it and will be buying one. But which one? You've got to take everything in. Uh, I'm neither for or against Sony or for or against Microsoft, though I do prefer playing my Xbox 360. Only because it's got the games I like playing. I've got to admit that. Anyways, so just think about that. Give us your comments, guys. Please like, comment, favorite, share, subscribe, tweet this out. Show it to your friends. And don't forget, guys, uh, we've got podcasts we do also. The XP podcast happens every other Wednesday night. We record it on Wednesday night straight to YouTube, streaming it. And you can watch that through our YouTube channel, Christian Gaming Com. And then... It also comes out in just a podcast sound version of it, an MP3 file you can get on uh, Saturday or Sunday normally. Now when we stream it, it's about 9.45 Wednesday Eastern Time if you want to watch, 9.45 p.m., not a.m., and uh, if you want to look this up on iTunes, it is HCGXP. So just look that up and you will find it on iTunes. And please give us five stars if you're willing. Also, we have the HCG Newscast. The HCG Newscast occurs every week and comes out on Tuesdays. It also is on iTunes and we would love to see you give it five stars. You can find that by searching HCG Newscast. Please, if you haven't already, sign up for our forums and introduce yourself. We'd love to hear from you, to talk with you about games, about God, and whatever things you're passionate about. So, with that, I say to you guys, game on, and God bless. Good night, guys.